conference and Heisman odds are out for the 2022 college football season. We will react to those as it pertains to the Louisville Cardinals on this episode of the Locked On the Louisville podcast. Stay tuned. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everyone? Welcome in to this Tuesday edition of the Locked On Louisville podcast. Obviously not a woman Wednesday, a woman Tuesday, however. Dalton Pence here, your host, joined by my weekly guest, Cardinal Sports Zone co-founder and editor Jeremy Woman. 55, what's going on, man? Uh, not much. Chilling. Uh, waiting to see what's 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 uh, going on in the land of the Cardinals. Got a lot going on. Uh, can't wait to talk about it all. Everything's kind of basketball centric nowadays, but um, decided to take a little bit of a step back. We're going to go toward football. Some good uh, stuff to talk about on Monday. Malik Cunningham, the Cardinals' star quarterback, found his name in the or one of the more initial. 2023 NFL mock drafts. We will talk about that. We will also then discuss um, Heisman odds, where Cunningham currently opens out at a 50 to 1 candidate to win the Heisman Trophy. And then finally, we'll look at the Louisville Cardinals football team as a whole in, as it pertains to the opening lines to win the ACC tournament. We'll start out uh, with the NFL draft. Um, it, it seems like right when the one draft ends, well, Another mock draft begins, and the watch to the 2023 circuit begins. I will uh, kind of introduce it. Malik Cunningham found his name in the first round of a CBS mock draft on Monday. Now, I will say that if you looked and saw who the number one overall pick was, it was the quarterback from the team down the road. So take everything with a little bit of a grain of salt. But Mm. nonetheless... Malik Cunningham uh, drafted by the Seattle Seahawks in this mock draft at pick number 26. The the description is, surprise, Cunningham has springy athleticism and a live arm with a big super senior season at Louisville. He could appear on the first round radar. 55, this is the first time that I've seen Malik Cunningham in first round considerations. Do you look as this more of a of an overreaction, just kind of uh, trying to throw something at a wall, or do you think that there's actually some substance here that we could see the Cardinal signal caller be in contention for first round? Well, first off, I don't believe this mock draft. They've got that dude down the road as the number one pick, uh, so I will take that with a grain of salt, and then I'll, I'll roll it up and burn it. But uh, no, absolutely. I mean, and, and Malik would be a perfect candidate to be a first round draft pick just off the. The, the common sense, he's been here for five years now. He keeps getting better and better every year. I don't know why, uh, with, with the increased support and the the quality of the players around him increasing this year, there should be no reason he's not a first-round draft pick. He, he makes really good decisions. He's fast. They keep calling him Lamar, uh, Diet Lamar Jackson. It, it, it's a perfect first-round pick for me. And it seems like I know that you and I have talked about this on on the Cardinal Sports Zone podcast uh, throughout the season, and and especially last year. And that was the fact that each season, it seems like Malik Cunningham is improving some facet of his game. Now, this past year, it seemed like he definitely took that next step. People want to talk about, oh, you know, he's older than most college quarterbacks. Well, he's only what twenty three, maybe twenty four. In the grand scheme of things, he's still. Still pretty young. What does he need to do in the 2022 campaign um, at Louisville for him to even be into consideration? Is it more along the lines of staying the course of his current production, or does he need to take a leap in in certain aspects? And he is 23. He'll be 24 uh, during the season. But he just needs to, for me, he just needs to stay consistent. He needs to have a better year this year than he had last year. Because, again, as we've said multiple times before, He's gotten better in one uh, facet of his game or the other every year since he's been here. As long as we don't take a huge step back as a team, uh, he doesn't take a huge uh, step back stat-wise. It's just the – it just makes sense that that he would be one of the top quarterbacks in the country as long as that, that trend continues to tick upwards. And it would help if, 
I'm not going to say the guy down the road goes number one, but it would help Cunningham's case if, let's say, a guy like C.J. Stroud from um, from Ohio State. I believe he's in this upcoming draft. I could be completely wrong, but you get what I'm saying. If you have a quarterback kind of go up in – yeah, okay, so yeah, C.J. Stroud, Bryce Young are both in this class. So you're, you're talking both probably projected top five picks, uh, arguably. So I, I do think it helps that the first two quarterbacks are probably going to go off the board early on to the point where you you know you may have some other teams kind of take um, take a shot at quarterbacks early on, and, and I wonder maybe I'm kind of putting too much stock into this. It seems like there there's a lot of trends that kind of go on in professional sports in terms of drafting, in terms of roster, um, you know, evaluation and stuff like that. It seems like. There's never been a better time for mobile quarterbacks to succeed in the NFL because it seems like te- it seems like teams are putting more emphasis on trying to get guys that can um, be elusive in the pocket and, and churn yards out. Really, I think that Malik Cunningham is looking to go into the NFL at the right time. Absolutely, uh, you hit the nail on the head there. Like this, the, the game is evolving; it's changing, and teams are having more problems defending. Uh, a mobile quarterback than they are any other type of quarterback. So uh, again, you hit the nail on the head right here. It's just, it's the, he's the right player at the right time, in my opinion. And I, I don't, and they'll probably, you know, there's, there's always people that say, well, was he not going to be a wide receiver? He's quick. He doesn't necessarily have that great of a, uh, of a deep ball in terms of accuracy. Can he be an NFL quarterback? I think that that's always going to be the question with any quarterback that comes out of college. Can he be an NFL quarterback? What have you seen from Malik Cunningham that shows you, yeah, this guy's going to be a quarterback at the next level? Just his, his uh, last year, for example, his accuracy, his ability to just like thread the needle downfield. He, uh, we saw against NC State, he had a couple of, of just unbelievably placed ball. And that, that, that's just the first one that pops into my head uh, to Marshawn and to Amari uh, that just, like, I'm not sure any other quarterback could have made. So, for me, it, it's it's his accuracy that, that has, has raised him up a level in my eyes. Yeah, the accuracy makes sense. I, I think that he's doing a lot better with his uh, passing down the field. I still think that um, – you know, you could see a team try to design an offense, assuming that he would be a starting quarterback. Obviously, if you get drafted in the first round, you're being you know primed to be a future uh, you know cornerstone of the offense. I could see them using like a, a Jalen Hurts type of comp, um, a guy mm-hmm. who's very very dynamic with his legs, arm arm strength at least downfield accuracy wise. It's a little bit a little questionable. But still, he's very, very solid in the intermediate routes. Um, I think that the biggest thing that we need to see improved upon by Malik is just his overall decision making. You know, when when you get to the NFL, obviously uh, decision times come a little quicker in terms of reads in the pocket and, and stuff like that. I think that there were times this past season at Louisville, it got better as the season went on. But early on, it, it seemed like he was double guessing some of his reads, getting a little hesitant with his throws, you know, causing it to be a little bit of an airmail or even underthrown. Um, that that's probably the aspect of the game that I feel like he needs to uh, continue to improve upon. Because in the NFL, you know, reaction time goes from it probably gets cut in half, so to speak. Very, very true. So, yeah, I mean, it, it really just kind of depends on. Uh, how the board shakes out, uh, free agency quarterback wise, it seems like the the quarterback carousel continues to swirl over and over. But I, I really think that having him in the first round here, um, I don't know if it helps his Heisman odds b- because um, you know it's 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 going to be an uphill battle to to win that, uh, assuming he has a fair shot. Uh, but it could it can't hurt because a lot of it's based upon popularity. Malik Cunningham opens up. The Heisman voting uh, from Bet Online odds at fifty to one. Um, we'll talk about that here in the next segment. If you are watching this live, obviously you will not see any um, added commercial live reads. If you are listening to this on the various uh, platforms, you're going to hear a couple of ad reads. So be sure to keep that in mind. As always, I want to say thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder, the Locked On Global podcast is free on all streaming services, five days a week, your team every day. 
joined as always once a week by my good friend Cardinal Sports Zone co-founder and editor Jeremy Wallman talking a little bit about Malik Cunningham going into the second segment discussing the Heisman Trophy odds he opens up the season as a 50 to 1 uh I wouldn't call it favorite a 50 to 1 candidate to win the Heisman Trophy CJ Stroud is currently 3 to 1 reigning Heisman Trophy winner Bryce Young 5 to 1 um, as far as ACC players, DJU from Clemson is at 28 to 1. Tyler Van Dyke from Miami is 33, excuse me, 33 to 1. And I think uh, Brendan Armstrong from Virginia is also 50 to 1. So, um, kind of an uphill battle here for Malik. Um, it, it seems like the Heisman Trophy has kind of been more of a team award rather than an individual player award in some instances. Is there a chance in 2022 that we see Malik realistically be in the hunt for this prestigious award? Man, that's such a tough question because as there's you, so many as, factors, there's so many factors. Plus, as you know, there's always the, the politics that are being played. There's been several times when the best player in the country um, doesn't necessarily, I mean, Lamar should have won it a second time, but he didn't because he wasn't on the best team the second time. But if you, if you cut all that aside, um, the schedule is very favorable for Malik to do very well this season, in my opinion. So, yeah, I think at some point during the season, he could be a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate. Uh, it, it's just how the cookie crumbles and, and how we – perform in the big games. Uh, like you said, just so many different variables and factors. I, I just, I'm, I'm not sure, but I, I would say that if, if we win nine or 10 games, like a lot of people think we will, he'll be right up. He, he, he may not be invited to New York, but he'll be in the top 10. I feel like easily. I think, and I'll get your take on this as well. I think Louisville would literally have to win at the very minimum nine games. And that's at the minimum, like minimal conversation. He might get the nod just because it's turned into this team, this team award almost to where it's like, okay, you could be the best player in college football, but if your team doesn't win 10 games, you're not going to get this award because uh, apparently football is an individual sport to where 11 other players don't play on the field at the same time. So uh, nine games is probably a minimum. I'd venture out and say you probably have to win 10 games and or maybe even, you know, get into the ACC championship game. I, th I think that would be fair to say. I, I, I would say ACC championship game w would put him in the top five. But for him to win, it, it, he'd, he'd have to make the playoff. We'd have to make the playoff for him to have a shot at winning it. And you mentioned politics. If, if Malik is going up against a guy like C.J. Stroud, or he's going up against uh, a national media um, icon in Bryce Young. You're right. I mean, I think that the, it do, it does get a little political. It gets a little bit in terms of okay, you have a Ohio State standout, you have an Alabama standout. You're right. Louisville would have to make the playoff for Malik to truly get considered. I'm not saying that you know um, he wouldn't have a shot, uh, but I, but I do think that they're going to have to have considerable amount of team success. But in terms of individual performances we, we look at what Malik did last year very very rare I mean uh, he was one of the only quarterbacks in the past what like 10 years to even flirt with 19 passing or 20 passing and 20 rushing which is incredible yeah. I think he was uh he actually just missed it by one I think he only had 19 passing touchdowns uh yeah that is correct 19 passing touchdowns at uh, just under 3,000 yards passing um and then he had two, uh, 20 rushing touchdowns and over a thousand yards rushing one of the best uh, rushers in the country regardless of position which is incredible i i almost feel like the 19 passing touchdowns would have to increase i i think oh, it may, sure. i think it might look a little better on paper if you kind of um you know flip-flop those and, and put more of the touchdowns in the passing column than you do the rushing column. And I maybe I'm just looking too much into that just because of the numbers that you're going to see from Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud. The, the numbers in the passing touchdown column are going to be there. So I feel like it's going to have to be a spot where – what's a – how many passing touchdowns realistically or touchdowns in general does he need to eclipse to, to be in the conversation here? Just kind of spitballing. 
I'm glad you, because I was just sitting here thinking that probably 30 and 15, 30 pass and 15 rushing. And that's fair, but I, I wonder, is that is he capable of that in this offense just because it is an offense that really is kind of predicated upon the run? Now, a lot of that is factoring in Malik Cunningham. The ball is in his hands to make those decisions. I'm not saying he has to go out there and stat pad to where you know he puts games in jeopardy. I'm not insinuating that. But this offense runs the ball more than you know some of the other nations' high-powered offenses to where it, does Louisville even have a scheme that could support Malik Cunningham in this campaign? I think I, I truly think so. I know that he's talked about changing up the, the play calling. I don't know in his philosophy. I don't know if it's going to be a complete change of philosophy, but if he makes the necessary change, I mean, Malik could single handedly himself, you know, single handedly uh, make the 30 and 15 happen. Uh, we, we, one thing that we have to improve on is last year we got down to the red zone a lot and didn't come out with any points. Uh, Very true. He could, he could, just by improving this and that, he he could he could have had easily ten more passing touchdowns even last year. So, I uh, I really think with the the impro- the 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 O line improvements, uh, the upgrades, I feel like what were upgrades in the offense. I, I feel like we we do, we do uh, he, he does not we do he does have a chance in we this do. offense. We do, we do. Uh, I'm out there every Saturday. No, but uh, when the new NCAA football game comes out, the first thing I'm going to do is put Malik Cunningham in the road to glory mode and win a win a Heisman Trophy with Malik. The first thing I'm going to do is um, make. Well, I, sh- I wonder if how that's going to work with NIL and stuff. I, I wonder if you can like if you were to do a dynasty, like like how you used to be able to do it. But then again, I would assume Malik's gone by the time that that game's out. So Fair. I wonder, you know. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is go to Alabama's roster and cut Tyler Harrell. So that's that's how petty he's, I he'll am. be gone too. <laughs> that's that's true. Uh, well, I'm still going to I'm going to go to Alabama's team, create him, and then cut and him. they cut him from the roster. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, cold. Yeah. <laughs> that's cold. That is my level of petty at this time of the day. That's that's just wild. But um, I, I think that personally, he has to have a Duke game multiple times next year. Now, I'm not saying that he's going to get what. What do you get? Like five hundred yards of offense or something like that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not saying that he's that's a sustainable model because that's that's video game numbers. Um, but I think that he has to have those damn type performances. Like you have to like uh, you turn on Sports Center and it's like, well, look at what Malik Cunningham just did for Louisville. He's got to have a couple of those because he's it's a popularity contest as well. It's a very much driven by narratives within the media. I'm saying that if he, you know, he's got to play well against Clemson. He has to play well against Kentucky because that's probably going to be the last opportunity that you you see him play before the decision. Now, that's assuming he's in the conversation. He 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 can't have. Let's say the it's a very uphill battle. There's very very uh, minimal room for error, but he has to have some big time Heisman moments. Like Lamar did back in 2016, Florida State, Clemson, Charlotte, you know, so on and so forth, to where you know he kind of uh, derailed and dethroned some guys off of their thrones that were possibly going to be in the mix. Yeah, and that's what I was just about to add. He's, you know, you asked what he had, what he had to do. He's, he's got to, he's got to duplicate the guy that so many people um, see seeing his game and that's Lamar you know Lamar did uh, his Heisman year he had uh he had those type of games six seven times that season I I would I would venture to say that it was almost every single game that season Malik's just got to do it I feel like six times and, and and we're good but again it's really hard to 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 predict stuff like this when we haven't seen this year's product on the field yet. I mean, obviously it's too early, but just off of of what we know, I just I, I feel like Malik's going to take it up yet another level. The only thing I see stopping Malik uh, is the one thing I think that that could affect a lot of these players, and that is the NIL. I've seen him; um, he he's had a, a different deal every week the last six months. It seems like. And if 
he can handle all that and play. That's what's going to be the biggest thing for these kids. Can they handle the pressure of getting all this money to perform well and then actually performing well? We've seen instances where athletes have been like, oh, this is too much for me. I can't do it. Uh, you know, as, as in Simone Biles, you know, she tried out for a team that was going to play in front of the whole world and then realized, oh, wait, I'm going to play in front of the whole world and decided she didn't want to play because it was too much. Can Malik, uh, can Malik withstand that pressure of all that money being thrown at him and, and perform well? And I think that freshman year Malik absolutely could not have. I think that senior year Malik, it, it's to be it's, it's to be seen. I did see him. He had nil deals at the, uh, last season, and there were times where you saw him struggle. It's it's another. He's another year older, another year more mature. As you said, he'll he'll be, gosh, he'll, he will be fairly old for for college football. Twenty four is that what we said? He'll be mm-hmm. twenty four during the season. I mean, a lot of a lot of kids have already got through college football at twenty two. Like there, there's three year rookies in the NFL, or three year not rookies, three year players that have three years of experience in the NFL that are his age. So you you got to think that it, that it's now or never, and he'll either do really well or or he won't. Yeah, I mean, this is a big-time money year for Malik Cunningham. He has the opportunity to make himself a ton of money. And, you know, like we mentioned, first-round first round, uh, you know, projections. Like I, like I said, I think that Malik Cunningham has the tools to be a successful NFL quarterback with the right system, with the right coaching, just like any other quarterback that comes from college. You yeah. know, I, I'm not – I'm sorry, but I, I, I'm not going to entertain, oh, should Malik switch positions to – to be able to be better suited in the NFL? No. I mean, he's he's a college quarterback that has the tools and the potential to be a solid NFL quarterback. So that's that's kind of the end-all, be-all for me. And I think that this year he's going to prove a lot of people that, hey, I'm built for the next level. Despite being a little older, everybody has their own path. Let's make it happen. So um, obviously we'll talk about Malik Cunningham uh, throughout the offseason and so on and so forth. But – Speaking of a little bit too early predictions, Bet Online released their conference um, odds to win the ACC. We'll talk about that here in just a second after we talk about all the things that Bet Online has to offer. Look, our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all of your betting needs and sports info. Find all of the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs. Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next season's NFL futures. Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sporting wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile, dev- mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online is where the game starts. Final segment with my good friend, Cardinal Sports Zone co founder and editor, Jeremy Wallman. Jeremy, the Cardinals received. 66 to 1 odds to win the ACC in the future in this season. I'll say that they are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10th in line behind teams like Boston College, Virginia, Florida State, NC State, North Carolina, Wake Forest, and then the top three is Clemson, Miami, and Pittsburgh in that order. Initial reaction to hearing projected tenth from Bet Online. Uh, initial reaction is is this: we're, we're not. I can, I can understand why they would think that that we would finish tenth in the conference, but we are we're we're going to be a top three team in the conference this season. I truly wholeheartedly believe that. Again, just with all the talent coming back. Uh, a season with these coaches, that's what's most important to me. That's what we've been preaching, the continuity. Every year that this that Coach Satterfield has with these guys consecutively is another year that they are learning, uh, learning him as a coach and learning his philosophies and, and his game plans and, and playbooks and et cetera. I, uh, I, I get it, but there's no, there is absolutely no shot Mostly, mostly like with Sean and a girl, there is no chance that we finish tenth in the ACC. So my initial reaction: 
Eh, I get it, but no, no, that's not going to go down like that. I think it's, I just think it's really, really low because I mean, 10 out of what, 15 teams. I mean, I mean, I get it. You're, you're above Syracuse and Duke. You're above, you know, Virginia Tech that lost a lot and Georgia Tech, which frankly is probably not going to be all that great, but I get it. Boston College brings back Phil Yurkovec. Virginia's got Brendan Armstrong back. Florida State's Florida State. But, but even then, like, we're talking about a Wake Forest team that you have at home this season that outside of the phantom field goal, we could be singing a different tune. The Cardinals should have beat Florida State by about 20 points last year, should have beat Virginia. We're up on them 17 points going oh into the gosh. fourth quarter. In Boston College, I get it. It was Dennis Grossell at quarterback. But at the end of the day, you know, I still think 10 is very, very low. I think it's doing a disservice to Scott Satterfield. I think it's doing a disservice to Malik Cunningham. Uh, but it, I get it. I think of a lot of this is all predicated on what the defense does because you know what you're getting with the Louisville offense. It's, it's as high octane as it's been. But it's the Louisville defense. It's what are we going to see changes wise in, in this little defense to warrant a, a different prediction i i look at the schedule I, it's probably easier than last year would you yeah. agree oh I yeah mean, for sure non-conference for sure i mean i get it winning the acc is based upon acc record but like i look at the schedule i mean you sure clemson is probably going to be bouncing back from a from a very very down year but i, I just I guess I'm higher on this team than most. I know that you're very, very high on this team as well. Um, what's a solid finish for the Cardinals? Now, let's say let's say they don't finish top three. Is there a too low point for the Cardinals um, here in the ACC in year four under Scott Satterfield? Yeah, I mean, we absolutely cannot be under 500. I mean, I oh, feel 100%. like... Oh, 100%. You know, I, I, think, I think seven would be the... It would still seven would be disappointing, but it would be like okay, it's it we're still it is building. What it is. Yeah, and yeah, the recruiting class building. kind of mends it over. Absolutely, the, that recruiting class absolutely makes that that uh, that bearable. The thing is, and what a lot of people don't have these days are patience. And well, what what if, what if they're not a doctor? How are they supposed to have any? <laughs> uh, corny. Uh, knee, ahead, give yourself a, a high five. Give, yeah, give yourself a high five and then turn it sideways and stick it straight up. Never mind. But no, it's it's gosh, just let let things let the cake bake. Uh, yeah, and I'm not saying Coach Satterfield is is the right guy or the best guy, but he's the guy and he's been here for a while, and that's what we need. We can't just keep re keeping coaches for two years than getting rid of them because we're not happy. It takes a while for players to, I mean, case in point with John L. Smith, we had a couple of rough years there, but as he stayed and our players bought in, you know, he was here for a while and, and they mm -hmm. bought into his philosophy. And then he left us in the middle of the bowl game for Michigan state. Okay. Probably not a great, uh, ending there but the fact is is that we have to we have to to believe in this coach and a lot of people a lot of people haven't bought into him yet as the coach these players have and it's year five and this for me is the make or break year it takes about five years to turn a pro start to turn a program around because that's when you are finally starting to have more of your players than the prior regime's players and this is when things should start to click so Absolutely, seven should be the the one, two, three, four. Year four. Year four. That's what I meant. Year four. It takes about <laughs> four years to turn this. Dude, it. I, w I was asleep 20, uh, 29 and a half minutes ago. I apologize. <laughs> year. Uh, it, it takes about four years though, and and this right. is year four, and let's just see what he what he brings out. But no, for me, se seven wins would be disappointing but it would be like okay well it's better than last year we got the recruiting class coming up the thing we're gonna have to look for here is if scott uh, if coach satterfield does win eight or nine games does he leave the school for for a north a, a different north you know a different uh you know a change of scenery and i think with the way he's been treated the first couple of years by the fan base 
he's probably looking to get out as soon as possible. I don't know that to be true, but I know that if it were me and I hadn't been given the proper amount of time to turn a program around, I'd be ready to leave as soon as possible. So it's one of those danged if you do and danged if you don't type situation. So hopefully you all are patient with him this year. You tweet him good things instead of wishing that him and his wife would move to a, a different country and and we, we start to mend this relationship or things like I remember last year his wife, one of the nicest people I've ever met in my entire life. She's a very nice woman. Posted something about dress shopping in North Carolina and somebody was like, Keep your butt down there and y'all don't come back. And it's like, my God, just it, chill. Let the cake bake. So yeah. To wrap it up, seven uh seven is 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 my minimum happy point there. A lot of questions, and hopefully over the season we will get some very, very encouraging answers, but I agree. All eyes are on year four. A lot is riding on this season, both for certain players in this program and also for the team as a collective sense. So, hey, but that's going to wrap up this Woman Tuesday. That didn't it sounds, it, doesn't. It, sounds, it sounds weird, and like I said earlier, it takes, uh, you know, it takes five years to get to year four. So... Maybe it's just – no, I'm kidding. Yeah, it, it does sound weird, though. Woman Tuesday, I don't like it. Let's not do this again. Uh, <laughs> I definitely agree, but, hey, you have the floor. Um, same as always, CardinalSportsZone.com. Check it out. We have lots of great stories. Dalton's one of our feature writers, one of the best writers we have. Check out his stuff there. Check out my stuff there. Check out – get Sean a date, please. Somebody so, – Look, Sean. Sean will make one of your all's mom Locked on real happy. Matchmaker. Yeah, yeah. Cardinal Sports Sean, Matchmaker. Sean will make one of y'all's moms really happy. I promise. Uh, <laughs> and check out the podcast. The numbers yeah. are growing exponentially. Uh, you can find that on all the podcast avenues. I thought once we started our our video format that those that the audio numbers would go down. They're going up. The video numbers are nuts themselves. So. Thanks for the support. We appreciate you all. And uh, even though it's the off season, so to speak, send us your ideas. Maybe we could do a, a theme show during the summer. We got plenty of guests coming up. We got uh, we got Chris Redman. We got Ben Souders. We got Nolan Smith. I thought you were about to uh, say Ben Simmons. I was like, how'd you ben, manage to finesse that one, bro? I, I, I I've got Ben Simmons. Uh, no. I got the process. No, who else? There's one more person. I left them. Chris Redman, Nolan Smith. I'm going to kick myself for not remembering Ben You'll Souders. You'll remember after the recording. I will. I will for sure. But but just we, we got plenty of special guests coming. Oh, we're going to have Derek Anderson, NBA uh, veteran, uh, city of Louisville. Uh, he's not the fourth guy I was talking about, but you know he'll do – you know, he, he did a lot for me in my career, in my childhood. So we'll have him on too. Just lots of great people. Uh, Dalton's on there. Me, Sean, Sam, Joey, Wes sometimes. There's another guy, but he's moving to Nashville. Don't remember his name, but <laughs> yeah, check us out. Some great stuff. Who is that guy that's moving to Nashville? I forget um, his name. P- Piggy? <laughs> no. Biggie, Biggie, that's it. It's we we yeah. may remember it um, at, at a later time, maybe on the next Cardinal Sports Home podcast. But, hey, as far as this Locked on Louisville podcast, always a great time having you on, Jeremy. That's going to wrap up this Woman well, Tuesday Still edition sounds weird. It was show. Sydney Curry. Sydney Curry was the other there guy. There you go. Sydney Curry on the show. But, hey, that's going to wrap up this Tuesday episode. Everyone have a great day. We will see you right back here tomorrow.